So now let us look at the natural fibers, the first natural fiber that is cotton. So cotton is obtained from cotton plant. So cotton crop, where do these crops grow? Which type of soil is needed to grow cotton? So the soil that is needed to grow cotton is black soil. This is suitable for the growth of cotton. And the climate, it should be warm. Warm climate and black soil, these are the two requirements to grow cotton. So the cotton plants, they grow, they flower and they produce cotton pods. The cotton pods are in the size of lemon, lemon sized cotton pods. Once these cotton pods are dried up, once they are completely dried, they pop up. Just how a corn pop up to popcorn, in the same way the pod it pops up and open. So when the pod, if this is the pod, it pops up and open like this. So there we can see the fluffy cotton wool. So if this is the pod, it breaks and open and we can see the cotton wool. Cotton wool is made up of cotton fibers. If you take a little cotton wool into your hand and if you pull the strings, you will find thin fibers. Those are the cotton fibers. So that is obtained from the cotton wool. Right? So from where do we get the cotton wool that is from the cotton pods and the cotton is white in color. So in such a way the cotton is obtained. They will pick all these cotton pods which are burst and open. Now to get the cotton fibers, the cotton has to be, the fibers are to be separated from this part. It has got the cotton wool as well as the seeds embedded in this. There are seeds also. So they will remove all the seeds and they will separate the cotton fiber, cotton wool. So this process is called as ginning. Ginning is a process in which the cotton seeds are separated from the cotton wool. This is done by hands in most of the places. Most of the times they do it by hand, hand picking. Nowadays machines are used to do the process quickly and effectively they are using the machines for ginning. That is removing the seeds from the fiber. Right? So this is about the cotton fibers. How we get the cotton fiber? Cotton fiber we get from the cotton plant which generally grows in the black soil and in warm climate the cotton plant grow and it will flower and it fruit the fruits are in the size of lemons those are called as cotton pods once they are dried they burst and open then we will find the cotton wool but it is having so many seeds embedded and these seeds are separated by hand by a process called as ginning so the next natural fiber that is obtained from plant it is jute from plants we obtain two fibers, two types of fibers, cotton is one, the second one is jute. So cotton is a very soft fiber that is used to make cloths, cotton cloths. Jute is also a fiber but which is coarse. The jute is used to make gunny bags and some ropes and such kind of materials which are used for packing because the fibers are coarse, very rough. Nowadays there are so many machines which can very much smoothen the fibers of jute, so by that the cloths are also made up of jute. Jute cloths are also available in the market, right? So from where do we get the jute? Jute is obtained from a plant stem. Cotton is obtained from the fruit of the cotton plant, but whereas the jute is obtained from the stem of the jute plant. So these jute plants are generally grown in states like West Bengal, Bihar and Assam in our country. They are grown in West Bengal, Bihar and Assam. They are mostly grown in a rainy season. So this is the climate that is required to grow them. So once the plant is grown, once they are harvested, that means the plants are cut and the stems are rotten in the water. They keep the stems in water, stagnant water. They are immersed in the water. Stems are immersed in the water. So they become rotten, any plant or animal matter, leaves or any remains, if you throw it in water after a few days, they will decay, 
they get rotten once they are rotten they will take out they will crush them they will beat them hardly to extract the fibers from the stems so fibers are obtained the jute fibers are extracted from the stems right so we have seen cotton fibers and jute fibers so fibers are made into fabric or they are made directly made into fabric first the fiber is made into yarn the yarn is made into fabric now let us see the process how the fiber is made into yarn so spinning cotton yarn how to make yarn from fibers we have seen how the fibers are obtained naturally that is cotton and yarn cotton and jute now let us see how to make yarn from that cotton or jute fibers so what is the process called as making the fibers into yarn is called spinning the process is called spinning how is it done it is done with simple devices like takli it is called as a hand spindle hand spindle so simply for a small length of string you can make it with your hands also just you can put cotton wool in one hand just you can pull the wool and you can spin it like this by twisting the fibers you can make a yarn but it is not strong enough right it may break up if you stretch it so to make a good yarn you need either takli or hand spindle or charka so charka is having a wheel set up that is rotated and the wool is made into yarn charka you might have seen in the pictures of mahatma gandhi gandhi ji used to do the process of spinning he used to make the cotton wool into cotton yarn on his own charka so charka and takli these are the two devices that were used to make the cotton fiber into cotton yarn right so those were used to make the fibers either cotton or silk into yarn silk yarn or cotton yarn so mahatma gandhi he used to work on cotton he used to move the charka to make the cotton wool into cotton yarn so that yarn is used to make cotton fabrics so in the indian indian independent independence struggle the freedom struggle so when the indians were fighting for the independence so he was leading that fight mahatma gandhi so then he encouraged the people to make lot of cotton yarn and fabric with cotton fibers that is homemade that is indian made cotton fabric and he encouraged the people to wear swadeshi khadi that is the homemade natural cotton cloth made out of cotton fibers so he asked to avoid wearing the clothes that were imported from the british right so that is spinning nowadays there are so many machinery machines and mills have come for this process of spinning spinning what is the spinning spinning is nothing but that making the fibers into yarn that is called as spinning so to get the fabric what to be done this yarn is to be made into fabric so this process is called as weaving let us see what is that weaving so now let us see yarn to fabric we have seen fibers to yarn now yarn to fabric so here we can do this by two process one is weaving and other one is knitting let us see what is weaving weaving means here we need to take two yarns in opposite directions one set of yarns they are running parallel the another set of threads or the yarn they run horizontally so parallel and horizontal threads are weaved one after the other so in this pattern the cloth is made and this process is done by looms so the looms are of two types one is hand looms so hand looms are very famous in our country in many of the villages the villagers are skilled in doing the 
operating the hand loom where they make their own yarn and later they will color the yarn and they will fix the yarn in the loom. So, here to make for the process of the weaving the yarn needs to be set up in the horizontal rows and columns. The threads are to be arranged in horizontal and vertical position. So, one by one these yarns are they are done the weaving. So, they are arranged in a particular setup that one horizontal thread it comes up, the next horizontal thread it goes down, one vertical thread it comes up and one horizontal thread it goes down. Let us see here, here this is the vertical thread coming up, here one horizontal thread it is going down and it is coming up, the other one the other vertical thread it is going down, it is coming up. So, in this way the weaving is done. So, in this way two sets of yarn are cross waved to make the cloth. So, hand looms the looms are of two types hand looms and power operated looms. The power operated looms they also they do the weaving process. So, the next one is knitting. Knitting is a process in which the yarn is made into fabric. You might have seen some ladies they are holding a woolen thread with two needles they are doing the knitting. Here in case of weaving we need two sets of yarn one runs horizontal one runs one runs horizontal one runs vertical. So, vertical and horizontal. So, that is the pattern for the weaving whereas, in case of the knitting a single woolen yarn is made into a fabric with the help of needles right. So, that is also done by hand hand knitting and machine machines also they make some garments by knitting example your socks. So, you might have seen your socks if you start pulling one string of your socks the whole lengthy string comes because the socks is made up of a lengthy string not a set not a pair of yarns it is a single yarn right. So, this is called as yarn to fabric there are two process by do for doing this weaving is one and knitting is the other one. So, now let us see the history of clothing material. So, we know that if you see the pictures of ancient men cave men. So, what sort of clothes they used to wear? They were not wearing the clothes that we wear today right. So, today we have so many different ki kinds of clothes with different colors and shapes of our choice right. So, we you use them in different designs different fittings. So, it was not there. If you see the pictures of cavemen or ancient men they use it to drape some material around their body just to cover it or to protect it. It was not a big design. So, how they used to get their clothes? First the early men they used to collect the natural materials to cover their body that is the bark of trees and leaves with the help of leaves they used to make their clothing. It is very temporary because you know that the leaves they wilt and dried up very soon. So, every day freshly they have to make their clothing with the leaves and with the twigs and twines they stitch they keep all the leaves in order to cover their body. And they used to cover their bodies with fur and skin of animals animal skin is used as clothing they used to cover their bodies if it is cool they used to get the fur and skin of wild animals which they hunt and that skin is used for protecting their bodies. And the next one is after that after this period they found the natural strands. They were collecting the hairs of animals furs of animals fleece of animals and small twigs and some kind of grass which is stiff and stretchy such kind of grass with all these they used to make strands long strands. So, they started weaving these strands into some fabric fabric it is very rough fabric not like the fabric that we are using to make our clothes such kind of rough fabric was made by weaving the natural strands that are obtained from fur hair twigs and fleece. Later in the ancient early India it was discovered that certain people those who lived near Ganga 
Ganga river. There, there were the traces or evidences that people they grew cotton and they used the cotton for their clothes. And in ancient Egypt, people used to grow cotton and flax and used to make their fabrics. So, they just they used to make fabrics and the fabrics they used to drape around their bodies in different forms. Without stitching also you can wear a cloth. How? You see the sari, you see the, you see the dhoti or lungi. So, it is simply a cloth, it is not stitched. So, there is a style of how do you keep in it on your body. It will stay on your body without any stitching. Right? It is an art, it is a skill of wearing turban, dhoti, sari without stitching. So, till the invention of that sewing needle, there was no stitching. So, once it was invented there, people started stitching, cutting the cloth, making the cloth into different shapes, different designs, all these were made by stitching. Till then, simply wearing, wearing the cloth in different forms. That was the history of clothing material. Now, we have so many choices. Now, even we have robots which are making the garments. So, we have a very wide range or collection of clothes of our choice in the fiber it is used, whether it is natural or artificial, in the colors they are used, the textures, the prints, even you can print your photograph on your clothes which you are wearing. So, we have a plenty of variety as like that we have a wide range of food materials, we have wide range of clothes to wear. But the purpose of the cloth is to protect our body and to keep it proper in according to the changing seasons or climatic conditions. So, in this lesson we realized that actually from where our cloths come from? They come from the fibers that are obtained from the nature. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.